So let me ask you this question. So I was thinking about this in a conversation recently. And I look back at like the different properties I've owned, whether they were rentals or flips or I've lived in them and thought about it this way. What do I regret more? Like the ones that I bought or the ones that I sold? It was always the ones that I sold. What would you say? Yeah, no, that, that, that's gotta be the case because all of them are worth significantly more than they were yeah. then. A couple of times I'd sell them. I'm like, I can't believe this house is worth this much. Right. I'm not going to pay that. So I'll sell it. Right. And then now it's worth, you know, exponential more. Right. Yeah. The market always goes up. Yeah. So I'm not going to do it again. So tell, tell me, as I know you, you, in your whole career, you've got lots of stories. Is there one that, that comes to mind that of a, either a client story or a house story or, or some, some situation that was, um, you know, maybe outside the norm. I mean, there's always stories that you can tell, you know, most of the stories that I always kind of focus on are like transactional stories. Like when a seller did something, a buyer did something as part of a negotiation, what happened to help use that story to kind of talk about the current transaction I'm involved with to like tr use that experience to try to help advise someone or show them like other experiences on what's happening, you know, good or bad. Um, but you know, a lot of realtors have like, you know, some just crazy stories. I mean, I guess, uh, you know, in essence, I've got two that I guess are kind of funny. Okay. One is, uh, you know, Saturday morning, the agent confirms the showing, the buyer and I are walking through the house. It's a mess. We're talking about what a mess the house is. And like, can't believe that, you know, anybody would leave their house to be shown in this manner. And then we open one of the bedroom doors and somebody's laying in bed. <laughs> like, oh, poor. Right. And then another they way. Huh? Were they asleep or awake? Or I, mean, they sleep. I think they were pretending to sleep at that point. Right. It was probably, it was equally embarrassing for both right. of us. I think and, we're done at this showing. Yeah, yeah, we're done. And then the other time that I had was, um, you know, I drive a truck. I think a truck, you know, one, it's a good tax write-off compared to, you know, some of the automobiles. But the trucks, to me, they're so nice. I use them to show clients. You know, it helps me out when I'm showing, you know, farms and land and different properties I can kind of drive around. So I've got a referral and... You know, his budget's very open, you know, anywhere from, you know, 1 million to 30 million, you know, for what we're looking at. And I've got a proof of funds that shows, you know, well in excess of $100 million in just one account. So I take the person out to go show him property and we want to go drive around this farm. I mean, it's late November, the ground feels frozen and we start to go out into the middle of a field to drive around this property and we get stuck in like 12, 18 inches worth of mud. It was just super soft where it had been plowed a couple of months before from a soybean crop. And oh my gosh, it's like to have somebody who's got him and his wife and his daughter all in the car together in the middle. and then we get stuck in the mud. So then it's like, I had to get his out because I would go back up to the barn. We grab some boards, you know, put it in there. I'm trying to push it. He's trying to rock it. It was just one of the most embarrassing things. Did he the guy was really cool about it. Like, okay. you know, he, I mean, it was farmland and he was like a, you know, extremely smart, you know, business person, but you know, he was like a, you know, he was kind of like more of a farmer's soul. Okay. So, you know, non-judgmental, but really embarrassing for me. Cause you know, it's like, I think I can take my truck. I'm used to driving around property. So anyway, the truck got a new set of tires after that. They're a little more capable. And did he buy, did he buy the land? Uh, he did not buy that. We're still looking, trying to find the right okay. property. Right, yeah. All right. So let me answer this. Oh, I have a quote. Let me show, let me show the quote of the day. All right. What do you got? All right. Hold on. Right on time. Real estate investing, even on a very small scale, remains a tried and true means of building an individual's cash flow and wealth. And that's from Rich Dad Poor Dad's Robert Kiyosaki. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's very true. All right. So let me answer this. If you put a quote in every podcast. We do. Yeah. And you heard earlier today that, like, the quote only means so much is you kind of say what's substantial behind that. Yeah. So, well, it's, it's right along the lines of what we're talking about. Yeah. You can take that, that $10,000 and invest it in. A hundred thousand dollar asset that's going to grow based on the asset, mm -hmm. or ten thousand dollars that's cash on cash is going to invest and grow on its own. Very true. And I think that um, obviously leverage. So we we're talking about leverage, growing your team. Yes, as you're starting to do. Where do you see yourself? Um, I mean, three years, five years in terms of your team, your volume. Where do you want to go? You know, it's like it, it's so hard to kind of imagine. You know, like what direction we could take it. Let's just say. I don't know what direction I'm going to go, but I'm really excited. And it's like, you know, having, you know, two good team members just immediately, like, you know, starts to give me the confidence to like, you know, try to do more to, you know, help them grow, help me grow. It, you know, it really feels like a team effort. And I love the guys that are, are working with me. So I'm just really excited.
Yeah, so, we'll, so we'll see what happens. You're, you're a bit of a, have me back next year. Or, you're a bit of a control freak, right? You like to, to well, you when you do everything on your own, oh, and it's like it's hard to delegate. Yeah, you know, I've, I've met a lot of people in this industry that come in as attorneys, and they go from being an attorney to to real estate. Like the, you know, it's you don't ever see doctors come into real estate, but you see a lot of attorneys. But attorneys are very good at like delegating. You know, they got their paralegal teams. They focus on what they're supposed to do. They delegate, and it's like I think we can learn a lot as agents. You know, just to like let everybody be their specialty on their team. Like you don't have to wear every hat and, you know, take the time to get delegate so you can focus on, you know, what's best for us. Yeah. Well, what's best for our time. Right. And be and best for the client. Yeah. Because sometimes I know you, we're not actually necessarily doing our clients a good service when we're trying to do everything. Oh yeah. You know, I know I've experienced that and then realize, you know what? I should have let someone handle this because I'm not really serving. For my best client. Right. When you're out in the field, you're showing properties, you're meeting with clients, somebody calls about a contract to close, question on a transaction that's in processing, you've got to, you know, stop, look back through all your notes, and it's like, when you're out in the field, then next thing you know, it's like you might have a couple hours before you can get that information together, whereas you've got a team and everybody's got access to the files, you know, somebody can get in there, get that information, get it to them a lot quicker. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, so that that's a good observation um, and, a, and a good point. Yeah. What? Let me ask you, if I wanted to... If I was in Louisville, okay, or knew some people in Louisville, uh -huh. wanted to either maybe join your growing team, yeah, that or, would be you. Come on, right, let's go. Know, let's Come on down. down. Or say we want to we want to buy some farms, some land, house, uh -huh. lots. How will we reach you? What's the best way to reach you? Uh, JasonFairby dot com is my website, or Jason at JasonFairby dot com, or five zero two six four nine five one eight one. I'll call me, shoot me a text, DM me on Instagram uh, at JasonFairby dot Realtor. Okay, we got it. So that's the way to reach it. We appreciate it. Yeah, brother. All right. I appreciate it. Yeah.